Welcome to the Winging It Travel Podcast with me, James Hammond, where every Monday I'll be joined by a guest to talk about their travel stories, travel tips, backpacking advice, and so much more. Right now, I'm taking the podcast on the road traveling with me. So tune in every week for short form episodes detailing all my travels alongside my Monday guest episode. Are you a backpacker, traveler, gap year student, or simply someone who loves to travel? Then this is the podcast for you. This is a casual, informative podcast designed for you to inspire you to travel. There'll be stories to tell, tips to share, and experiences to inspire. Welcome to the show. Hey, yeah, just a quick one. I just want to say there are many ways to support this podcast. You can buy me a coffee and help support the podcast with $5. Or you can go to my merch store with the affiliate link with TeePublic, where there's plenty of merch available to buy, such as T-shirts, jumpers, hoodies, and also some children's clothing. Thirdly, which is free, you can also rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or Good Pods. Also, you can find me on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Simply just search for Winging It Travel Podcast, and you'll find me displaying all my social media content for traveling, podcast, and other stuff. Hello, and welcome to the next episode of the Winging It Travel Podcast, and today, we are doing days 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20 and we're going to cover Canmore, Calgary, the Grasslands National Park and Regina. So for leading on from the last one, our plan after Two Jacks Lake was to go to Minnewanka Lake for coffee. Now the funny story here is we thought we have never seen this lake before so we turned up, parked the car, took the coffee, looked at the lake and thought hmm we recognise this Oh yeah, we did go there a few years back. So very privileged to have been here and not even remember it. But still all the same, absolutely stunning. Took a coffee, sat on the bench and great views, got some great photos. But we knew the rain was coming. So we got quickly down to the lakefront, 360 degree views, enjoyed our coffee, then got to Canmore. Canmore, as stated before in the podcast, is one of my favourite places I've been to. And it's great to go back. But we kind of felt like we're rushing against the time because we saw the clouds we got there it was clear sky went into town and done a bit of souvenir shopping for the first time on this trip for me bought a couple of t-shirts and a pair of socks I admired the three sisters view there the mountains in the background of Canmore and also just the surrounding area it's a nice little town like set back mountains everywhere you really should give it a go downtown's quite cute go down there probably 20 minute walk completed that bit and then we went to Blondie's Caf for a fantastic coffee because they do fantastic coffee but also for great views but as we got to Blondie's Calf it started to absolutely piss down with rain so we chilled out had the coffee and then the rain came so we thought right let's get a move on let's get to Calgary the drive to Calgary is about an hour 20 minutes something like that our accommodation that we booked was out of town it wasn't in Calgary it's about 25 minutes from downtown not sure the area but it looks like basically farmland it looks like an area where people bought land build a house and that's it the drive to calgary was absolutely horrendous i've never driven probably in as much hailstorms rain ever before dangerous people were kind of freaking out a little bit really you couldn't really see so people were parking on the road chilling out and waiting for it to stop it wasn't going to stop anytime soon but we did do that because i just thought i just can't deal with this anymore Put it got an hour in, chilled out on the side of the road and then went for it. Got to accommodation probably about an hour and a half after we left. Blondies in Canmore, but not very nice. And it kind of ruled out the rest of the day really because we got there early afternoon. No sightseeing because it's absolutely pissing down the rain. The Airbnb was interesting. Now we fell for this trick when we first came to Vancouver many years ago. What happens is people would label this as a private room with a private bathroom. Now beware, this basement huge basement complex has two units unit one unit two and we're in unit one but unit one has two bedrooms and a bathroom if you're a family yeah it's private because you're going to have probably the kids in one room and the parents in the other and you share the bathroom between you but if you're just going as a couple then you're probably going to be spending the night or two nights with another couple in the other room and that's what happened and they thought the same thing so what happens is you go in, we're in unit one, we're in bedroom one if you like, another old couple were in bedroom two and we're sharing this bathroom and you have to coordinate times and all that sort of stuff. So do be careful when you book Airbnbs in Vancouver and obviously Calgary now as well. 
just make sure you read it and look at the photos and try and make sure if you're trying to book a private accommodation that it is private and not share anyone else and the key component of this would be just to read the reviews decide from there but just be aware of that saying all that the bed was super comfy the room was really nice and spacious and it was actually no problem the bathroom seemed to work out okay and the kitchen was shared between the two units so a very small kitchen it's gonna be chaos if it's four couples in there if you like across the two units so next day calgary this was our first sort of big city adventure really of the whole trip we've been to little towns or they've been to vancouver doesn't count this is the first one where we thought okay we're going to check calgary out do we like it is it possible we could stay there in the future Calgary is kind of known for a few things. The Calgary Stampede, which finished the day before we arrived. This is a big festival. Not, don't know too much about it, but involves rodeos, horses, cowboys, and that sort of stuff. Probably good food there. That's a big thing for Calgary. Uh, it has cheap fuel in Canada, the cheapest. And also it's quite industrialised and quite conservative. They're probably Calgary's mainstream views, if you like. So I was going there with extra oomph to try and figure out what was going on and we knew a parking spot 20 minutes outside of downtown for a cafe and it's free so we went to Dulex Diner went there a few years ago or last year for coffee this time it's for brunch unbelievable you are paying $30 for a brunch and a coffee but brilliant all the same after that parked the car and walked into downtown downtown's about a 20 minute walk down the hill first off we walked along the Bow River so we got down into across the bridge we took a left and we're going towards an amazing little area called Inglewood, which was recommended to us by the waitress in Dulux Diner. And this is where Emma wanted to go and see a yarn shop. First impressions, yarn shops was the yarn shop, but the area looked pretty trendy and pretty cool and very close to downtown. So maybe it's somewhere where people can live and be a bit trendy and hip. Then we walked into downtown to check out the library. It's a central library, has amazing architecture four or five floors in it real comfortable free internet toilets all that sort of stuff load of books you can do free free tours there as well check that out that was pretty cool one of the aims of probably calgary to be fair was phil and sebastian coffee one of my favorite coffees that we have they're based in alberta in calgary and their flagship store is at the simmons center by the bow river so we walked another 10 minutes to there and this building's fantastic they do their roasting there they have the cafe there, you can buy merch there, they have the officers and admin there. Real nice location and a fantastic old building for a coffee. Check those guys out. The coffee, as always, was fantastic. Record an episode on that. Check that out on the Trendy Coffee podcast in the near future. Get that in early doors. Then we walked further along the river, but going towards downtown, to Prince's Island. And this is a little island, kind of in between downtown land, if you like, and the next bit of land. The bridge goes across. It's in between that. Very nice gardens, very colourful, very peaceful, and great views of downtown. This is a fantastic day for weather, so we got quite lucky with that. It wasn't too hot, but hot enough, and that was fantastic to walk around that. Would recommend it. And then a very interesting, sort of quirky thing about Calgary is they have these... Imagine the High Line in New York. It's outdoors, High Line, it goes in and amongst the high buildings. Calgary has this, but covered up, so it's like all these walkways in blocks, like one building to one building, one building to one building. It goes all across like this. It's called the 15 plus skywalks. I think it's actually there for the winter because it gets really harsh conditions in the Calgary. You can walk in downtown, in and around, and just go and check out different buildings. Pretty cool. Each building has probably something in it that you might want to do. We went for Tim's, had a coffee, analog coffee. That's fantastic coffee. Real nice, spacious area. Lots of people on lunch breaks from businesses and working and stuff real nice atmosphere and to finish off calgary we walked down to stephen avenue which is like the main street shopping some breweries down there cafes and stuff pretty cool and we finished off at the famous five statues to kind of check those guys out they were suffragettes who got calendar to recognize women as people can you believe before that you know early 1900s they didn't really believe they were people a bit strange to conceive these days some countries still struggling with that but these guys were prominent figures in society and getting those rights across in Canada society so worth checking out learning about the history of Canada and women in Canada and that was it for Calgary loved the city decent vibe very spacious very quiet uh, downtown compared to Vancouver seems very quiet but it's pretty cool would I live there not sure yet but it has 
hallmarks of maybe a place that you could consider. There's a few facts about Calgary that are pretty cool. It's one of the sunniest places in Canada. I think it's about 330 days a year of sunshine, something like that. It's perceivably cheaper than maybe some of the big cities um, and a lot more space. You could probably just buy a bit of land, build an apartment or house, and it probably costs less than Vancouver. And also the fuel is very cheap and probably lots of jobs going on in the Calgary area. So decent place to live if you're looking for somewhere to live in Canada. Next day was Grasslands National Park and this was a seven hour drive. Very early start for us. We had to get out by eight just to get a move on. It's going to be a long drive and Emma done the first stint. First, we drove to Medicine Hat. Yep, you heard that, Medicine Hat. That is about a three and a half hour drive along the one. And we stopped here for a coffee at Station House. Fantastic coffee, great location. You can buy coffees in there as well in terms of different bags of coffee. They've got different companies in there. But very nice location in town. Very small place. You can walk it in five minutes, free parking or two hour parking in Central. Went to do some shopping, some Canada Post stuff. Oh yeah. And also get some lunch at McDonald's where we saw some Hells Angels people coming from Quebec. I think they're going to Metro Vancouver for a meet. So there you go. Saw those guys. Another three and a half hour drive. I took over this time and we're going to Frenchman Valley Campground in Grasslands National Park. Now a bit of information about this. You can book online. It's $74.50 for two nights. They have uh, good toilets. They have an area to cook and also chill out in indoors. But it's open space with electricity. So you can have service sites and stuff like that. I recommend getting to Valmarie. This is where the visitor centre is. And you can maybe even check in there if you get it before 5pm. Or collect some stuff about the Grasslands National Park. The journey from Medicine Hat to Valmarie, even though it's three and a half hours, was kind of cutting through some roads the quickest way. And I've never seen an so much massacre of moths crickets any other insects on our car our car was an absolute state the road literally was for the crickets they just jump up and just obviously can't get out in time or they try and jump on the car before you come you're going about 90 k's an hour you're going to hit them we had a mistake where we had the window open a little bit i think two jumped in one jumped in on my lap i was freaking out i had to stop and oh these crickets got my life but anyway They were absolutely squashed on the window screen and the front of the car. Pretty grim when we got there. And the problem for that is, in Grasslands National Park, they have prairie dogs. Yeah, very cute little things. They're like rodents. They run around. They're actually endangered a little bit. But as soon as they saw our car, they absolutely legged for it and just kept climbing in the front of the car and collecting all the crickets and eating them by the looks of it. Great, but we're getting kind of stressed out because are they going to eat the wires? Is the car not going to start next morning? Actually turned out okay, but... That was our first impression of prairie dogs. And the one thing they do or don't do, which is very stressful, is when you're driving along the road, they stand there, they sit there, and they don't move when you come driving. So I might have squashed one. feel like I have. Saw lots. Avoided a lot. But very stressful driving in those conditions. But got there in the end. Grasslands National Park is fantastic. It's in Saskatchewan. We're trying to go to National Park in every province, as I mentioned before. This is the one for Saskatchewan. And it's right down south and it hugs the border of the US. Flat, pretty much, of just grasslands. There's a few hills going on about. And you can see some animals and wildlife here. So prairie dogs are one. You can see bison. Uh, we saw a running deer coming across. Had to time it well so it doesn't go in front of the car. So I sped up and got in, in front of it. But that came marauding across the uh, grasslands. And just a fantastic area to see and experience. It's a unique kind of weird almost like mars like not mars but almost just something i've never seen before just grass everywhere as far as the eye can see pretty flat the campsite does have an overflow area we did see a couple turn up without booking and they got placed in there it seemed pretty big you could probably risk it but the problem is when you get from valmarie to the campsite you're on gravel road for 15 k's just bear that in mind it's not bad gravel road it's fairly okay our van just about got away with it if you've got a 4x4 or something, that's absolutely, that's absolutely fine. But there is 15Ks of it. And to finish the first night, we went on top of the hill and chilled out and watched the sunset. And we think, we're pretty sure, we saw bison in the very distance on its own, just marauding in the, in the grass, chomping on something. That was pretty cool. Sensational colours, sensational greenery. Unbelievable. 
real nice night in grasslands. It's also one of the areas to do stargazing. It's one of the best areas. No, no light pollution. Awesome. But because of the fires, maybe quite hazy. So not the best time at the minute. But it normally is one of the best places in Canada to do that. Next day, there's something they call the Eco Scenic Tour. This is actually an 80k loop all the way around. You don't have to do that. The first part of it has seven stops. And each of these stops have like a board. You read what it's about, what's over there. And a lot of them have little walks off them. So we've done one to seven. The little walks off it. Some nice walks amongst the crickets again. Amongst the grass. Tried to spot some bison. Couldn't really see any. Maybe We maybe saw one on one of the walks. But real nice to do. Obviously got to drive to these points but along the gravel road the gravel road is fine and i would highly recommend it if you're looking for something fairly easy there's lots of different hikes in the area ranging from difficulties from easy to hard and they are based on location and also distance and if there's incline and decline there's a few 10k and 15k that look great um, but we didn't fancy that on this couple of days if you go to the visitor center you'll get a map of the whole area and that will tell you all the different trails that there are available there are some roads closed at the minute, so some aren't available to drive to. But just make sure you go to the visitor centre and choose which ones you want to do. The rest of the afternoon, we chilled out actually in the sort of hub area of the campground because it was very hot that day. We had four or five hours out in the nature. Fantastic, enjoyed it. Drove around, done some trails. And then it's nice just to go in the coolness and darkness of the visitor centre on the campsite. And had some lunch and just enjoyed the campsite views. Again, another sunset in the evening on top of the hill. No one really about on this one. Sat in the red chairs. Loved it. I love the views of the sunset over those hills. Brilliant. And to finish off, Grasslands is very rustic. You're in the middle of nowhere. Open campground. There's nothing else around. There is the west block and the east block. They're about 140 k's between each other. And they both are part of the same park, but different areas to go and explore. We chose the west block because we felt like it was easier to go and see more stuff in a short amount of time. But both blocks look incredible. You also need to be careful of rattlesnakes. They are about in the area too, but we didn't see any of those, of course. But all in all, great wildlife, great views. Got to go and do it in Saskatchewan. So to finish off this episode, we're going to talk about Regina. That was the last stop in Saskatchewan before we headed east to the Riding National Park. But Regina was about a three and a half hour drive from the grasslands. Left early, got on the road, and we drove up to Swift Current. I would recommend from the campsite go to Valmory and up the four to swift currents really good roads a proper road and then go on the one it's much easier google will try and take you through the shortcuts those roads okay but just a bit earthy with the crickets and not as flat and not as paved we went for lunch in regina at 13th avenue food and coffee house fantastic mostly veggie not all veggie but had a fantastic burrito and coffee and then we just walked down 13th avenue it's supposed to be trendy, it's got some nice calves, some nice art, and it's pretty close to downtown Regina. It's got some cathedrals. Went back to the car and we drove to Wascana Park. Parked the car up there, and this is around the lake, Wascana Lake. It's about a 5k loop if you want to walk all the way around. Real nice day, clear day, walked along, enjoyed the views, some people canoeing in the water. And we had a nice little coke by the fountain. It was very, very nice to finish off. But we were looking forward to a shower because obviously Grasslands had no showers. If you look across the water, you can see the Saskatchewan legislative building. It's very colonial, very nice to look at. And the fountain was called Trafalgar Fountain. These are a few things you're going to see. There was actually some water park thing going on, obviously for kids on summer holidays at the time. So parking was okay. But during the week, in normal times, it should be pretty cool. And Regina was a hotel day. Probably one of the first proper hotels we stayed in on the trip. Travel Lodge, nothing special. Probably the cheapest option available. We had some money on booking.com to use. So it only costs about $70 in the end. Came with a breakfast and that was very nice to have aircon, a big bed, a TV and a shower. Dreamlike. And after three weeks on the road, we assessed how far we've done. And we probably smashed in around 4,000 Ks. Something like that. We overspent as well on this trip. A lot of one-off things to buy. And we kind of planned out for the rest of the road trip how much we need to not spend, but also how many Ks we're doing, because that shocked us, I think. 4,000 Ks already at that point. Whew, crikey. It's going to be near 10 by the time we get to the end of the calendar at this point. Not a problem, but obviously if you're paying for fuel, that's a guaranteed cost. So we weighed all that up, reassured ourselves, enjoyed it so far, and really looking forward to going east. That's today's episode. So the next episode is going to be 
going into Manitoba province. That's going to be Riding National Park and Winnipeg and a few bits after that. But Saskatchewan was advised by a lot of people to skip. We did not skip it, went to Grasslands and Regina. I would recommend checking those two out. I'm not sure what else is there nearer that part of the province, but if you're going up north, there's probably more. But a fantastic part of the trip. This trip keeps getting better and better, enjoying it. Love camping. It's nice to be in nature. And I hope you enjoy this episode and it inspires you to get on this road trip. And I'll catch you for the next set episode. Cheers. Hey, yeah, just a quick one. I just want to say there are many ways to support this podcast. You can buy me a coffee and help support the podcast with $5. Or you can go to my merch store with the affiliate link with T Public, where there's plenty of merch available to buy, such as t-shirts, jumpers, hoodies, and also some children's clothing. Thirdly, which is free, you can also rate and review this podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, or Good Pods. Also, you can find me on social media on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. Simply just search for Winging It Travel Podcast, and you'll find me displaying all my social media content for traveling, podcast, and other stuff. Thank you.